So this is one of the most important problems when we talk about angular momentum. So just listen to carefully what we are about to say because in here they ask what is the rotating rods angular momentum about a point C and about the axis OO dash. So about a point and about an axis, what should be the angular momentum? So we are given the mass and length of the rod. Then this angle theta, which the rod makes while rotating and omega. So we need to find the rod's angular momentum L relative to the point C as well its angular momentum relative to the rotation axis. Then how much the L increases during a half turn relative to point C. And then finally the moment of external forces acting on XL O dash. So let's understand one thing why finding angular momentum about C is complicated. If you take any particle on the rod, so that will be rotating in this circle. So this circle is not about C. So C is not at the center of that circle. So that creates our problem. If the rod was horizontal and then it was rotating, rotating with omega, the angular momentum about C would be quite simple. That will be ICM omega. But here we cannot do that because the particles on this rod are traveling in a circle and at the center of that circle there is no C. So how to do that? So what we need to do, let's see in the diagram. So because every particle is traveling in with omega, so direction of every particles omega is upwards. So we can say that for each particle, the direction of omega is upwards. Now let's take a particular instant when let's say the rod is like this. So it's in the plane of our paper. So obviously the rod is making theta angle with the vertical. So what we do is we break this omega into <coughs> two components. So one is along the rod and one is perpendicular to the rod. So what that means is, so along the rod means now whatever that particle is which we are considering. So that particle is rotating about this axis with omega cos theta and that particle is rotating about this axis with omega sin theta. So component of omega in this direction. So what's the advantage of that is so when we consider that the particle is rotating about this axis and you can see that this particle is on the rod itself. So the angular momentum of that particle which is rotating about this axis is zero and angular momentum of the particle which is rotating about this axis is now verifiable because now the particle is rotating like this and at the center of its rotation we have the part we have our center c in this direction the circles are so small because all the particles are on the rod that it doesn't matter about which point you take the angular momentum so even though while rotating like this the center c is still not on the rod still not in the center but still its angular momentum is going to be zero but if you consider like this, so now it's when, it, when it is rotating like this, the center, the center of that circle is now lies on C. So we can write the angular momentum of that particle about C. So that's what we have done at a given instant. We have broken omega and therefore LC into two perpendicular components. So LC vector is we have broken into two perpendicular components. So L axial plus L transverse. So this is the transverse direction. This is the axial direction. And we can write L axial as I axial into omega axial and omega axial is omega cos theta plus I transverse into omega sin theta. Now I about this axis as discussed is zero and I transverse. So I about this direction is ML square by 12 
times omega sin theta so that is our answer so this is the angular momentum about the point c now in second part we need to find the angular momentum relative to the rotation axis so this part this time we need to find the angular momentum about the axis so we are going to do it in two methods so first is quite straightforward that is so you can see that imagine every particle is rotating about the same axis so we can we can just compress this rod and make it look like this so now also every particle on this rod is making the same circle radius on this rod also so mass is same but now the equivalent length will become l sin theta so l sin theta and now we can write l about o dash for this rod will be m l sin theta whole square by 12 so this is the i into omega so this is our answer but let's find it in another interesting way because we have found the angular momentum about c now if we take any axis that is passing through c so let me read so l about any axis passing through c is equal to component of lc along that axis so since we have already found the so at this moment for example the angular momentum of about c lies in this direction so if i take the vertical component of that so i will get the angular momentum about this axis if i take the horizontal component of that i will get the angular momentum about this axis so that also i can find so if someone asks me what is the angular momentum of this rod about x axis that is passing through center so i cannot do it with method 2 then so i have to do it with this method so i found the net angular momentum about c and now because the x axis is passing through c i'll take the component of that angular momentum so that so this angle will be theta so my answer will be this lc cos theta but in this case it's asking about o dash so our answer will be lc sin theta so again l about any axis passing through c is equal to component of lc along that axis therefore l o dash is equal to lc sin theta so lc we already saw is ml square by 12 omega sin theta into sin theta which will give our answer now second part how much l increases so l relative to the point c that is lc so how much lc increases during the half turn so you can see that when the rod was like this lc was along this direction in the direction of omega so when it turns by half angle the direction of lc will change so that's what is asking how much it has changed so let's see that so let's say the rod was like this before so the initial okay let me just exchange that so initially the rod was like this so angular momentum was in this direction perpendicular to the rod so that is lci and when it has turned by when it has gone half turn the rod will become like this and then sorry <laughs> the rod was like this and when it goes to half turn the rod will become like this so then the lc will be along this direction so this is lcf and this is lci but we know magnitude of lc is constant only the direction changes so because yeah because it's uh, rotating continuously and at any moment if the rod is like this the angular momentum is like this when is rod like rod is like this then the angular momentum is like this so lc's magnitude is constant but direction changes continually from 1 to 2 so in half turn the lcf is here lci is here so what we need is lcf minus lci so you can see so lcf minus lci will be twice lc cos theta in this direction and we have calculated the value of lc here so that will put here and we'll get our answer now third part the torque of external forces acting on the axial o dash in the process of rotation so you can imagine that because the angular momentum is continually changing about o dash we must be getting some external torque that is sorry <laughs> 
So because the direction of LC is continuously changing, we must be getting some external torque that is causing that change in, change in angular momentum. So external torque is dl by dt or d by dt of LC in x direction plus LC in y direction. So now we are breaking this angular momentum in x and y direction. So why we are doing that? Because in y direction, angular momentum is constant. So when we differentiate, that should be zero. That's what will happen. So d by dt of LCY is zero since it's a, since LCY is a constant. And what is the x component? That is LC cos theta. So this is the top view. If you look from the top, you will see that this is the LC cos theta that is continuously rotating with angular velocity omega. So if this is LC cos theta, if it turns by an angle omega dt, so this is also LC cos theta in magnitude. So this is the change in angular momentum in dt time. And what is its value? So the value of this change is LC cos theta into omega dt. So that is the change in angular momentum in dt time. So dlcx is equal to LC cos theta omega dt. So from here we get torque that is dl by dt. So that's what we did here, same thing. So dl by dt is equal to LC cos theta into omega. So again, we'll put the value of LC what we calculated before and we will get our answer. So very good problem. All right.